Good afternoon. Thanks for joining me again. It's a pleasure to have you with me. We will be searching God's scriptures for life principles for our daily living. We are talking about the proceeding word. Uh, such a wide a topic. It's, it's um, so much of our life is entailed in that. It's so important that we have an in-depth look at all the facets of this wonderful subject the proceeding word because it's our very life jesus said the words that i speak they are spirit and life he also said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god <clears throat> so in the natural we live of bread or food in the spirit we live by the proceeding word, the word that comes from the mouth of God. And we will be covering some more assets of that, uh, aspects of that. Um, but let us first just take a, a recap of things said last week. I think last week was very important regarding our lifestyle in the kingdom of God, in the New Testament church, etc., etc. Uh, we were talking about the visual and practical outworking of the proceeding word in the lives of some of the churches in the new testament we talked about macedonia in particular paul writing to corinth and stating or uh, um, talking about macedonia and how they lived and happened whatever happened there and i'm going to read second corinthians 8 to you just once again to to just pick up some very important things. The reason why I'm repeating some of these things, I don't want you to forget this. This is very important because we're going to look at Acts 4 as well. And uh, some of the principles that, that walk along what we've been saying already. So, so uh, please listen to this and make it your own. I urge you and I ask you to do that. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. And not only as we had hoped, <clears throat> but they first gave themselves to the Lord, and then to us, by the will of God. And uh, a few things that we said last week, which is very important to me, uh, some huge state statements spoken here uh, by Paul uh, regarding these people and their lives. Now, thinking about this verse, uh, I somehow uh, um, come to the following conclusions in my spirit. Please hear me. Uh, I want to say this, your giving will never carry the weight that it is supposed to have if it is done outside of relationships. I think these are the things that we need to say to each other in this season. People are one, wondering, how am I going to make it? How on earth am I going to? We all know about life outside and what is happening in economies, etc., etc. It's, it's just, um, it's not only mind-boggling, it's really devastating to some people. So we need to find God's way of handling our finances in this life, uh, etc. And as we know, God puts a great emphasis on, on giving and um you know, people always come with some criticism when you talk about giving and they say, yeah, oh, it's just about money and all of this. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is it's part of the proceeding word. And I'll, I'll show you how this links up with the proceeding word. And on the other hand, I want you to be prosperous. And not in a sense of what we've heard in previous seasons where it's all about me and my blessings. I want you to prosper in the purposes of God. In the purposes of God. I want you to have the blessing. Paul says this. He says uh, to one of the churches, he says, your giving, I'm not looking for the gift. 
but I'm looking for the blessing as the result of your giving to come upon your life. Now, unfortunately, you know, if, if I say I want you in the next room, the, the only way you're going to get there is through the door, in the natural, through the door. Now, I can't get you in the next room. Let's say there's some huge blessings awaiting you in the next room. I can't get you there if you don't want to go through the door. Uh, you, you can't travel through the roof. You can't, whatever. You can't, uh, um, you know, get a drone to take you there in some mys mystical way and you just disappear and the next thing you're in the room next door. You have to go through the door physically. Now, these things that God have promised come through or come to you through a certain door, and that door is giving. So, if you want to talk about the blessings and let people understand these things and, and start to gain them in their lives, you've got to talk about giving, the way to get there. You've got to do it, unfortunately. And then people uh, say, they, they presuppose that the motives of your heart are not clear when you talk about giving. They presuppose that it's for you uh, to gain the giving. Paul says, I'm not interested in the giving. I'm not, and that's the real heart of apostolic ministry. I'm not interested in the giving per se. But I'm interested in the giving as much as it brings blessing to you. Um, <clears throat> you know the, the one church, I think it's Philippi, he speaks to them and he says um, uh, all these things, uh, he, the one verse that we often quote, uh, my God shall supply all your needs. I think it's Philippians 4.19, if I'm correct, 17 or 19. We, we so often quote that, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and fullness in Christ Jesus, etc., but we forget that talking to a church which has been participating in His grace, participating in His grace and His needs, to them He's saying this. To them He's saying this. So uh, you can't just quote it in a haphazard way and you are not fulfilling uh, the requirements for this verse or this statement or this truth to be realized in your life. That is how God works. God acts or reacts, or might be difficult words to use, but God works on obedience. And first there must be the obedience from our side and the obedience and the act to, to loosen these things, to loosen the blessings of heaven. One of these acts is giving, is giving. So you can't, uh, you know, the moment preachers or people start talking about giving, just walk away and say, oh, there they go again. I thought this is going to come. It's just about uh, their pockets and their welfare, etc. It's not true. It's not true. We're not interested about what you give per se in that sense. Please hear me right. But we are interested in that you share in the blessings which God promised. That is what we want to see. People's lives growing blessed and not just materially. In every sense of life, people being blessed, growing in God, etc. This is such a difficult thing because we've had so many uh, people that are not truthful about this. Uh, so many people that, that fleece the sheep, as we often say. So many people <coughs> with wrong motives. And they really just come to get something from the people. But we want the blessings to come upon the people. And you can't take the presupposition away. You can't take the thing that is needed to do that. You cannot take that away. God does not work like that. So the giving is the factor <coughs> that brings these things. So let me, let me read this again. Thinking about this verse, 
I somehow come to the following conclusions in my spirit. Your giving will never carry the weight that it is supposed to have, the result, if it is done outside of relationships. Remember, Paul says, these people first gave themselves to the Lord, so they were committed to Jesus Christ. They were really, uh, as we would say, saved. They were really in God. They were living for what they they really wanted to do this. And then to us, and then to us, so they did not only give themselves to God, they also gave themselves to the carriers of grace, of the word, who ministered to them, and uh, made a, a plea or, or collected money for the cause of the, the, the church in Jerusalem. They gave themselves for this. So they said, we will give ourselves to God. We belong to God. We are submitted to God. And now listen to this. If we are submitted to God, everything we own, everything about our lives are submitted to God under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And then they took that and put it under the headship of the people over them in Christ. These are such wonderful truths, and people miss this uh, because some people are just plain rebellious. Uh, they do not want to, to walk in this kind of relationship guarding their own lives, their own lives and everything they have. So your giving will never carry the weight that it is supposed to have if it's done outside of relationships relationships. These people did not mind bringing their belongings into, into submission to relationships. To relationships. They gave themselves first to the Lord. That's where you start. And then to us, then to Paul and his team, to apostolic ministry. And then Paul says this, by the will of God, by the will of God. So this is the will of God. This is the way God wants it to work in His church. If you're not operating on this principle, you are not doing the will of God regarding your belongings and your finances, whatever. You are not administering your life according to the will of God. If it's not done inside these relationships, and according to this, I'll show you now what they did in Acts 4. Where they brought the money to. What was the point that they acknowledged that God put there for them, uh, to, for, their, for their finances to be administered correctly? It's a wonderful life that they're showing there in the church. But I'll take you there now. So... Your finances, your giving should never be done outside of relationships. Um, do not, it's not to impress people. It's not for any other thing than given inside of relationships, with proper relationships. We have become, uh, you know, we, we have become the stewards. We, we are supposed to be stewards. But we have become like gods over our own finances. We are, uh, we are guardians of the things of God. Stewardship was given to us. Stewardship, not ownership. Stewardship. But people have sort of uh, come to this thing that they will decide. They will decide what happens to their money and the money. They will decide... And by taking that place to themselves and away from the pro proper place that God has ordained for it, the church has become poor. The church has really become poor. I, I believe we are living in a season day where we'll see miraculous things, where we'll see abundance and abundance for the sake of people. We will see abundance. We will see rivers flowing. We will see these things if we can structure our giving and so on correctly. So it's given inside of relationships in the 
framework of proper relationships. Now, although we do not want people to follow the, the sowing and reaping kind of theology uh, in, in a lustful way, uh, hear me correctly, in a lustful way of doing it for personal and financial gain. Okay? We don't want, you know, just sowing and reaping. I sowed there, I should reap this. This was what I reaped because of what I sowed there. And I, I've sown so much, I'm expecting God to bless me. And just for this thing of what I want to gain. And, it, it, and I'm really saying that it's, it's done in a lustful way. What you want, you just want and so on. Uh, while we're not talking about that, um, we do not want people to follow the sowing and reaping teaching or kind of theology in a lustful way. Yet, yet there still remains the fact, <coughs> you cannot get away from this, that someone will reap what he sows. It's stated very clearly in um, Galatians 6 verse 7. Uh, he says it. He says it something like this: uh, "Take, take heed. God is not mocked. Just what a man sows, he will reap." So it's very clear, to, clearly stated to us: this is a law of nature. It's a law in the spirit. It works. It's going to work, no matter uh, what happens. It's a law that God instated and is brought it into the spiritual as well, teaching us that what you sow, you are going to reap. So you can use it, in, 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 as I said, in a lustful way of uh, me, me, bless me, bless me, I want to get, etc. But that's not what we are promoting. Uh, it is a law of nature, it will work in the spirit as well, yet the effect of spiritual implication connected to your giving is lifted to a much higher level if it is channeled through the pathway of relationships. Your giving is lifted to a much higher level if it is channeled through the pathway of relationships. Please hear me. I'm giving you golden keys, golden keys that I've seen in, in, in the span of 40 years plus. Uh, in ministry, it's it's. It, I'm giving you golden keys. Your uh, your giving, if your giving is lifted to a much higher level, that is if it happens through, or if it's channeled through the pathway of relationships. In other words, <clears throat> in other words, just as these people were connected or got connected before they gave, these people of Macedonia. Just as they got connected, were connected before they gave, so our giving will also bring results both ways and in both directions if we are properly connected to God and from there in the way that He has ordained for us. Okay, so, so clearly said, our giving as these people were connected before they gave, our giving will also bring results both ways, in both directions, for the one needing it, for the one giving. In both directions, if we are properly connected to God and, and, there's an and, and from there in the way that He has ordained for us. And I'm going to show you just now in Acts 4. We, we're working towards that. These connections, these connections form a platform for our giving and it works the result of supplying in the need of the receiver as well as giving joy to the giver please listen to me I'm, I'm reading this slowly and repeating myself so that you can soak it you can let it soak you can think on it and get it in these connections that we're talking about they form the platform for our giving and it works the result of supplying in the need of the receiver as well as giving joy to the giver, even in cases of poverty such as seen with these people. 
everybody, both ways, because they were connected. All sides were blessed. All sides were blessed. So there, this contains the principle of seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Seed for the sower, bread for the eater. That's also in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. And furthermore, it is channeled through proper apostolic ministry and oversight. It is channeled through proper apostolic ministry and oversight. Why? I do not know. God has a reason why he has ordained it like this. But we have surely gone astray from this. And finances across the world is in a mess. And the church is, is always giving itself out as poor. Please give this for the church. Please give this to the church. The church needs this. The church that. The church and so on. We are in a terrible state. We're in a terrible state, and in the same, with the same breath, we say, our God owns everything. <laughs> the whole world belongs to our God. The earth belongs to the Lord. And we will quickly claim that, and we will have these uh, slogans like, uh, uh, Jesus is Lord, and we will say all these things. But with this hand, we beg and we borrow. Don't want to say we beg, steal and borrow. But we beg and borrow. Please, it's for the church. <coughs> it's for the church. While I believe that things will turn around if people start giving correctly with the correct intentions and heart and giving into the proper system that God has ordained. Don't see the word system as a swear word. System just means the working and the way. I know many systems have killed what God wants to do. That is so. But that is why apostolic ministry is preparing and restoring the proper system for the household of God. And the household of God is a family. And in a family there are children and there's a father and whatever else. And I don't want to go into the details of that now. But that is exactly what. There's a father and a son in the spirit. Um, I don't want to, want to go ahead of myself. There's a father and a son in the spirit. And in that household, the son is a corporate son. We are part of the body of Christ. He has prepared a body for me. And uh, we are part of the body of Christ. And that is how God is ordaining His church and His family. So if we can correct these things and get the system right and get our hearts right, which is probably the major system of all, if we can get these things right, the church is going to be blessed, blessed abundantly. You know, you know we read Deuteronomy. We read Deuteronomy 28, where he says, you will be the head and not the tail. <coughs> you, will, you will lend out and not borrow, if my words are correct. Um, you will be this. You will go ahead. You will be... Uh, and we never see it. We read it and we say, praise God. But in our hearts, we, we sort of have pain because it's not the practical. It's not seen. We cannot say, yes, it is so. We experience it. And I believe that God is busy with the work of restoration to bring His church back to the, the real thing. The real thing. So these connections form a platform for our giving and it works the result of supplying in the need of the receiver as well as giving joy to the giver even in cases of poverty, as seen with the Macedonians. So there is again seed for the sower, bread for the eater, and furthermore it is channeled through proper apostolic ministry and oversight. Now I, I want to please just clear this before we, we close the session. I'm, I'm not by any means saying, that you cannot give something to someone in private or between the two of you. 
Uh, that's not what I'm saying. Clearly not. It's not a thing of now clamping down and, uh, you know, everything has to come through a certain way. And No, 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 no. That's not the real thing. But, listen to me, but on a scale like this, where kingdom advancement is at stake, so the kingdom belongs to God. It doesn't belong to us. So if you decide to give a brother a, a, a blessing, that's between you and him. That's on your skull. But where, as far as it regards the kingdom, God decides how it will work. Not us. God decides. He puts the order there of how things will work. So on, on the scale like this, where kingdom advancement is at stake, God has ordained a better and a safer way for the administration of these gifts. God has uh, ordained a better and a safer way for the administration of these gifts. And it's the way of grace. It's a way of grace, and we'll talk about that next time. Just let me close with this. So the people first gave themselves to the Lord. Are you given to the Lord? Do you really follow Christ? Have you given your life to God? And then <clears throat> they've given themselves to the Lord and then to the administrators of this grace, to apostolic ministry which was placed over them. And we are placed under ministry in the church. We are not lone rangers. We are not too good uh, to, to be placed under people. There's... there's uh, um, ministries and gifts and graces put in the body of Christ and Christ the head of the church put them there and God put them there and the Holy Spirit put them there if you think of Paul's teachings further on in 1 Corinthians uh, so, so it's not that we want to stand above these things we want to work together with these things so that we can really have the blessings that God ordained for us and now I'm going to take you next week to act Four, where you see two different, you see the opposite in, in people, in the way they, they uh, adhere to this administration. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time together. May you be glorified. Thank you for everyone listening. We pray for a wonderful week in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you.